Greetings radio people, welcome back to the shack. Last time we talked about building a QRP linear or a QRP-ish linear. Um, we decided that we were going to use the QRP Labs 10 watt linear amplifier and some good news to report that has arrived from Turkey. There's a heatsink and a bag of bits. So next time I'll probably construct this as this is clearly the main component for our amplifier. But we also talked about having an external or internal directional coupler, two logarithmic amplifiers which we designed quickly using the AD8307 analog devices logarithmic amplifier, and a bunch of low pass filters. We developed a load of software to run on the Blue Pill STM32, and we had a nice touchscreen for band selection and also the display of forward reflected power and SWR. Now I'm sure you remember that last time we looked at uh, the design of the AD8307 logarithmic amplifier and we nicked this circuit off the data sheet so this is a very standard uh, design for this chip. The RF comes in here, an RF sample comes in here and here is a is a, a voltage rep which is logarithmically representative of the RF coming in over here. Now, in reality, I've I ordered some of these bits off uh, a chap on eBay, and they suitably arrived through the post. And I've knocked them together on these little uh, prototype boards that I found. Um, so these are the AD8307s. There's a few capacitors and bits and bobs around it. This is an inductor which is coupling the DC in. And there's a 51 ohm, I think it is, resistor in mine. It's supposed to be 52.3, I think, according to the data sheet. But this is what they physically look like. So I've built these amplifiers. And then this cable and this red cable over here from the other one uh, feed off to the analog inputs on the STM32 blue pill board. So nothing very complicated there at all. So what I then did... I created a little bit of uh, calibration routine inside the software which you can switch on using a flag at the top, you just set it to true and the software will go into its calibration mode. I set up my signal generator at these different levels uh, which I calculated based on some assumptions up here. So I've said that my maximum power is going to be 10 watts, my minimum is going to be like a milliwatt or something which is basically a range from 0 to 40 dBm. Assuming that the uh, sample that we're going to take a forward and reflected power is 60 dB down that's a bit made up at the moment we may have to make some adjustments there because I haven't actually made the directional coupler but assuming that we're 60 dB down we're going to need to sample power from around minus 60 to minus 20 dBm so that's where this range of values came from we know that we're covering a relatively good frequency range so I set the signal generator up at these three frequencies at these five different uh, um, RF levels and I got the software to tell me what the ADC, the analog to digital to converter value actually was that the, the, the blue pill chip was reading from the analog input when these levels of RF at these frequencies were in there. I then averaged those across here so we took the average across the frequency range and then I plotted that so these numbers here against these numbers here I've plotted as the orange line on this chart here on this graph over here now what this shows us is that it's beautifully straight so because this is db which is a logarithmic scale of course this is like a linear a straight line linear thing i've added the uh, linear trend line i've asked excel to switch on a linear trend line and this is you can ask it to display the equation so this is the equation associated with the trend line for the numbers that we've generated from up here so therefore, Y in this case is at whatever the analog to digital converter reading is, and X, uh, sorry, X will be the ADC value and Y will be the value in DB. So what that means is if we can put this equation into, I've done it here in the Excel sheet here, using these two numbers from the, uh, from the equation here, that means that any ADC value we can then calculate what the actual RF power level is. So, for example, if the ADC was reading 2000, that means we're at min minus 27.91 dBm. All very good, you say. So I've done that for the forward and for the reflected, the two amplifiers that I've created. And then in the software, what we've done now is I've put the numbers from those equations from Excel 
into my software, I call them alpha and beta for forward and reflected. I've made the assumption that our attenuation, that our signal is 60 dB, 60 dB down. So we can have a look at that later when we've actually built the directional coupler, but that, so this value may change. And then what I do is I calculate the forward dBm value by applying these numbers to the ADC value. So this is basically a simple linear interpolation. So the forward dB value is calculated. I then calculate the power in watts. And then from the power in watts, we can then calculate what the SWR is using a fairly simple equation. So this should be really, really accurate. So this will take the samples of forward and reflected power through the logarithmic amplifiers into the ADC inputs, the uh, analog inputs of the blue pill, calculate the forward dBm, forward watts, reflected dBm, reflected watts, and then calculate the SWR. And then every second it's updating the display to tell me what those values are. We could also do something clever by like changing the color of the SWR reading, for example, based on the value. So if it gets over two to one, we could turn it red. If it's 1.5 to two to one, we could turn it orange. Lots of great things we could do with this touchscreen display. But for now, the software is doing exactly what we expect it to do, and that's working beautifully. So the second thing that I'd like to show you is the low pass filter. So I found an online calculator somewhere. Let me find it uh, here. Calculator Edge. So this is a great low pass filter calculator. You stick in your frequency impedance of 50 ohms in our case. I've used a 0.2 dB ripple figure every time. Number of components seven, hit calculate, and it will calculate the inductor and capacitor values. These are theoretical. Um, and then what I've done, I've used the mini ring core calculator here. So for example, if this is suggesting 730 nanohenries, I'll type 730 nanohenries in here. I'm using T56s. So this will tell me that it's 14 turns on a T56 to create this inductor. Um, I've also been looking at Hans Summers' site because he's got um, a low-pass filter kit here, which has got some, also got some fairly standard designs. Um, so I've been checking my values against these. Uh, but what I've been doing as I go, I've been prototyping the low-pass filter. I've then been uh, checking it with the spectrum analyzer, making some adjustments, and then copying it over to the main board that I'm building these things on. So in reality. Um, this is where I've got to so far. So this is the four meter low pass filter, six meters, 10 meters, 12, 15, and 17. Um, I'll prop a video in now where you can see as the uh, relays change, so the low pass filter values are adjusting. What I've done, I've basically cascaded these. So when this filter's not in circuit, it switches this one in circuit and so it goes on. So the shortest RF and neatest construction, if you like, is on the four meter filter. And as the frequency gets lower, so it kind of gets more grotty because the RF is coming further down here to go through the filters. This is only half of the job. I've only done half of it so far. There's another seven to go, uh, which is, oh sorry, another six to go, I think. Uh, it's become quite a laborious, boring task, but I'm doing it a few, a few at a time and that's working quite nicely. The, uh, I'll publish the um, design. Uh, I'll save this as a PDF when I've done them all. Uh, but I've put all of the values in here. I've put the uh, cores that I've used. So this is T37.6, for example. And I put the number of turns that it needs on here and what the inductance is and what the capacitance is. So it should be quite easy if you wanted to copy this to build something similar. Uh, but they're all working quite nicely. I've uh, fiddled with them and got them to work quite well. So I'm fairly pleased with that. So this is the project as it stands now on the bench. So this is the touch screen that you saw in the last video. So you can basically touch the band number and that is driving the relays over here and switching in the appropriate low pass filters. As I said, I've only gone from four meters to 17 meters so far. There's another six that I need to build. A uh, fairly boring and laborious task, but it's coming along. Each of the relays are wired in parallel. There's two relays for each uh, low pass filter, and then a small driver transistor. I used a BC547, if I remember rightly. Just had a bag of them lying around and decided to use them. So those are being driven from the STM32 board, the blue pill board, which is buried under these wires up here. But this is the STM32 board. 
These are the two logarithmic amplifiers that we talked about briefly, one for forward power, one for reflected power. These are feeding into the analog inputs of the STM32, which is doing the uh, fairly accurate calculation of forward and reflected power in dBm. It's then converting that into watts. It's also calculating the SWR and displaying that on the screen. So we've got forward power, reflected power, and SWR, all while it's still monitoring all of these buttons and making changes to the uh, low pass filters if we want. So this feels like we're getting quite close to having all of the bits and bobs to support the amplifier that I wanted to make now. So now that I've got this kit, next time, next time I'll turn this bag of bits into the 10 watt amplifier. We'll put the low pass filters downstream. We'll need to make a directional coupler of some sort to calculate, to um, take a sample of the forward and the reflected power. I'll have to think about that. And then we should be able to put it all together and we should have a fairly good QRP-ish amplifier covering top band all the way up to four meters. So far so good, don't you think? As ever, if you like what I'm doing, please subscribe to the channel. I'd really appreciate your support. See you next time.